in their choir day. Amen. Amen. I know in this fast-paced world, we fill our calendars up with so many other things. But one thing that is feasible to you and nourishment to you when you can come back and give God some praise. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. I've been, I've been in revival all week. And, um, and three souls were saved this week. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was talking to the ministers in the back, and, and uh, God had given me a word that I wanted to preach. You notice I said I wanted to preach. But sometimes you have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, I don't know whether uh, you have experienced being obedient to the Holy Spirit uh, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you concerning some things that you have been doing that does not line up with the will of God. Uh, that's one thing that we can do and, and mess up everything in our life and we wonder why the car is falling apart and the wagon wheels are falling off. We wonder why, you know, the bills are over, you know, just, just coming at you and you can't pay your bill. It's because sometimes we might need to look in the mirror and look at ourselves and say, self. Because we don't like to admit that sometimes it's us that causes us not to receive the blessing that God has for us. Who am I talking to? Some, sometimes you have to move us out the way so God can get the glory. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, sometimes, you know, the, the adversary, he, he's a trickster. He's cunning and he's seeking in whom he can devour. So he might paint a pretty picture to get you away from your praise. Uh, Y'all going to hear me today. Because the enemy will paint this pretty picture. he have you so caught up in what's going on in the world. I mean, it seems like the world is pulling at you all day long. And, and when the world is pulling at you all day long and you are not spending no time in the word of God, baby, sooner or later you're going to find yourself and walk away from the one that you love. But I want to talk to y'all just briefly on this subject. I mean, a subject that, you know, God told me, he said, you done preach this to that place, and you done preach this that, to that place, and people are getting saved, and people are getting delivered from this word. But when you going to preach it at home? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. Then, then God showed me myself. He said, look here, you go in preaching messages and people are being delivered. And then God asked me, when was the last time someone in the house that you pastor was delivered? Yeah, that, sometimes, and that, you know, then the Holy Spirit spoke back to me and said, you know, sometimes people at home get comfortable. Y'all so quiet. <laughs> but would you please stand to your feet as we uh, go into the word. I need you to look into the book of Judges, the sixth chapter of Judges. Amen. The young folks like to say, don't judge me. But we're going into the sixth chapter of Judges. Amen. We're going to read a few and... And Pastor, be out of your way. We thank God for our guests. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm glad to have you here. I mean, uh, we are a church that love the Lord, don't mind serving the Lord, don't mind praising the Lord. Uh, so we are honored to have you here today where everybody is somebody. And that special person is you. So we honor you today. Amen. Everybody have your Bibles. The sixth chapter, starting at verse 1. 
And it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the maidens. Seven years. Somebody say seven years. Yes, Annie, y'all, we're about to go into, we are entering into our seventh year. In other words, whatever we have been struggling with the past few years, God is about to bring that thing to pass. Somebody says seven years. seven years. And the hands of the maiden prevailed against Israel. And he, and because the Midianites and the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. So let's slide over to verse 11. And then came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak tree which was in Oprah that pertained unto Joash the Amzerite and his son Gideon thrusting wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee. Look at somebody and say, The Lord is with you. That's what he said. He, said, he says, The Lord is with thee. And then he gives him an encouraging word and, and, and he, to boost him up, to let him know you are a mighty man of valor. Look at your neighbor again and say, you are a mighty man of, of valor. You are a mighty woman of valor. I mean, God has put great value on the inside of you. Amen. Hello. We're going to stop right there. And I want to talk to y'all just briefly on this subject. Lord... Are you talking to me? I, I, I don't know about you, Sister Dot. I mean, there have been times when I, I've been riding down the road and, and, and just been thinking, you know, about, you know, the things that had came about in my life and, 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 and experiences some things that came about in, in, in some other folks' life that I know who have shared their pain, who has shared their suffering, who had shared uh, their loss of a loved one. I, I, I've, I've, I've been riding in my car, you know, uh, and I, I call it reading God's letter. Have you ever read God's letter? I mean, when, when God was actually talking to you this time. I mean, he wasn't talking to nobody else, but then you tried to ignore what God was trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to a young man the other day, and he was talking about the lifestyle that he was living. He was talking, and he said, you know, I was raised in the church, and, 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 and my mama and my daddy, they always told us, you know, not, not to shack up. I, I knew I wasn't going to get too many amens on that. Uh, but, but, my, my, but my brothers and my sisters, can I be real with you? Uh, everybody in this church knows somebody, uh, maybe in your own family, that is shacking. You, you know somebody in your family, they may not be shacking, but they are doing things that are contrary to the word of God. Yeah, uh, may, maybe they are in your house and yet they're making babies out of wedlock. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. But, but we who are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, we are carrying this gospel that God has given us. And we refuse to let them know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Look at your neighbor and say, the Lord is talking to me. Yeah, sometimes you encounter people in your life and, 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 and they don't have anything good to say. All the time you mean they, they want to talk about somebody else and they want to talk about you. They want to talk about the church. They want to they, they wanna always down somebody else. And, and, and you let them say these things in the face of God. You allow, you allow them to do evil. In the sight of God. And sometimes the people that raise more hell is the one that we should, getting, we should be getting joy from. And they are in the body of Christ. 
So my brothers and my sisters, the Bible says the children of Israel, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that ain't you, is it? You be careful, be careful, be careful to how you answer that question because you can be doing evil in the sight of the Lord. You can be, you can be, you can be living in an evil and deceiving state. You can be doing things that does not line up with the will of God. If you're still standing in the lotto line, hoping, just hoping, just hoping that you hit the lotto one time, but you fail to do what you made a vow to God when it comes to paying your tithes and your offering. Uh, can I help y'all here? You know, here it is. We are at the end of tax season, and it looked like there's a decline when, when it comes to giving. That I mean, it looked like, it just looked like during this time, there ought to be an increase in our giving, but there's a decrease in our giving. What's wrong with that? Now, I'm not saying that your tithes and your offering, your tithes, uh, I mean, your, your taxes that the tax reform that you get, the money you get back from your taxes. I'm not saying that, you know, you should tie it on that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if you have been faithful in your tithing all year long, then you don't have to worry about the bonus that God gives you in your tax return at the end of the year. If you've been faithful all year long. So, so when you get your bonus at the end of the year, then your bonus, you can do whatever you want to do with your bonus. So if you choose to be a blessing to God so we can build that new church that God has already put in vision. See, the reason why the church has not made a movement is because, because somebody haven't tied into what God has already dimmed to be. Here it is, the children of Israel. Uh, God has brought them out of bondage, had brought them out of captivity, had brought them to a promised land. But here they find themselves hiding in strongholds, hiding in caves, hiding in the mountain, hiding in their houses because of what they have allowed to come in and cause them to not to be faithful in the house of God. How many had family members that didn't have nowhere to go? And you invited them to your house. Y'all ain't talking to me. I mean, they, you invited them to your house. And, and, and they come in your house and they take over your house. I mean, you, you come home from work. I, you leave them at your house. They were supposed to be there one, two, three days, and they ended up staying three, four, five months. And when you come home, uh, uh, your house is tore up from the floor. Your furniture has been moved around. Uh, you look out in your yard. They say they were going to cut the grass. They said that six months ago, your grass is that tall in your yard. You allowed them to come into your house uh, because you're such a generous person. Hello, somebody. You come home, and, and, and you, last night you made that nice big pitcher of Kool-Aid, great Kool-Aid. Mama used to make that red Kool-Aid. It used to be good when it was cold. But they, 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 they see that Kool-Aid in the refrigerator. They see it in the refrigerator. They know you made it. And when, when, they, when you come home and you've been thinking about that Kool-Aid all day long, it's been a hot day, and you've been thinking about that Kool-Aid all day long. And when you look in the refrigerator, that Kool-Aid is gone. They, they might have left just about that much Kool-Aid in there. I'd rather for you to drink the whole thing than just leave it there. Amen. Amen. And then they won't pass you with the last little bit <laughs> in the glass. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tie this into to everyday life. And, and then, you know, you notice in their past, when they passed, they, they had on your robe. Oh. 
Note this, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, note this. It, it, the only way they was able to drink your Kool-Aid, the only way that they was able to wear your robe, the only way that they was able to wear your slippers is because you let them in. Oh, Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. So the children of Israel, now, 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 now your folks are coming knocking on your door and, and you looking through the peephole because you remember the last time they came. Hello, somebody. You, you remember the last time y'all had the family reunion. It was them kinfo. It was those that went out the door with all the food. I know I ain't talking to my family because I got some family members. If they come to the family reunion or if they come to a church function, they're the ones that get in place. They'll take it to the car. They'll, they'll tell him to hold it. And then they'll come back in and finish it up. Y'all ain't y'all don't have people like that in your family, do you? If you have people like that in your family, can I get an amen? Somebody said, yeah, Lord, you talking to us. So the children of Israel, the reason why they, were, how, how they was hiding themselves in cave, uh, the reason why you hide, because, you know, you remember people taking things from you. The reason why you look through the peephole when somebody ring the doorbell, the reason why you look at the caller ID when the phone call come, because you were hoping that that person, that you don't want to come in your camp anymore. To show up. But one thing about that, if God has something for you to do, if God has something for you to do, he don't have no problem in waiting on you. So God sends an angel to, to Gideon. The Bible says Gideon was down in a cave, thrusting wheat with a wine press. Hello, somebody. Uh, I mean, the last time I read about a wine press, you press grapes. But he had found a way to, to thrust wheat with a wine press. He, 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 he found a way to make a way out of no way. Amen. And some of you, you alert, you're using some of the traits that grandmama and grandmama and big mama taught you a long time ago how to take a handful of ground beef and make a loaf. <gasps> how can they do that? Well, my mama and my grandmama, they would cut a bunch of onions up. Y'all ain't hear me. Hello, somebody. And, and then they'll put a little flour in it. And then they put those leftover biscuits in it. And by the time they finish it up, it's all stretched out. And that's all that is, brother. That's all that is. All that is God stretched out. Because God will take a little bit and make much out of it. Well, let me let you know why, why, why they was doing what they was doing. Because the enemy, the enemy, the ones that they let come in, uh, uh, they came in and they destroyed everything. Deacon Mays, they took everything. You know, sometimes people, when they come and, and you ain't paid your bill, they're going to take everything. Uh, if you ain't paying your house note, and, and they're going to come and try to take it, IRS going to come get everything. So, so what happened was they, they came uh, like grasshoppers. Long time ago, there used to be grasshoppers. Uh, I mean, Ryan, this time I see you start seeing it because people start planting their crop. And grasshoppers would get in the field and, and they'll just eat up the crop before the crop produce any fruit or produce any, uh, any, any corn or anything else. Grasshoppers, them big, great, big old. I mean, there used to be some ugly ones. We used to get a string and put it around their neck and, and use them as airplanes. Y'all ain't talking to me. But God, God, God wants to talk to us. So God, uh, he comes to you in order to get you to move. To, to get you to move, he, he, has to, he has to woo you. He, he has to uh, put some sugar on you. 
He, he has to uh, come to you in a right way. I, I know that you are a man of God. <laughs> And I know your mama and them. I know your daddy is a preacher. I know your mama, you know, she's a praise and worship. Uh, but, 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 but why have you stopped doing what God has called you to do? I'm not talking about you, Chris, but God is talking to somebody in here today. So, so he comes to you, and the first thing, Gideon, uh, he, he begins to riddle off to uh, the, the man of God, the angel of God. He, he starts talking about, I mean, why you come to me now? I mean, aren't you the same God that, that, that was with my mother Eunice and, and my mother Lois? Ain't you the same God that was with Reverend Walker, uh, with Sister Walker? Ain't you that same God that was with Sister Garrett? Ain't you that same God that was with, with, with Deacon Holmes? Ain't you that same God? Then why have you allowed all of this to befall on us? Yeah, some of us go through some trials and tribulations, some ups and some downs, and you are blaming God for your trial and your tribulation, so you half heart yourself to the things of God. But God don't mind putting sugar on you. So he comes, he said, and if I can paraphrase, man, you sure look good. Sister, you look good. Y'all look good. When I say Jesus look good on you, I'm trying to put some sugar on you. In other words, you are a mighty man of value. Sister, you hanging out with somebody, all they, all they ever wanted was your cookie? Something is wrong with that. Brothers, if the word of God is in you, I know I got deep, yeah. You, sometimes you have to just shock them with it. Brothers, if that's all you want, then you're on your way to hell. So God don't mind putting a little sugar on it. And the Bible says that he calls him a mighty man of valor. So Gideon responds, are you talking to me? I mean, really, are you talking to me? So, so the angel said, yeah, I'm talking to you. So get it, you say, if you be who you say you are, then I'm going to go inside this house and, 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 and I'm going I'm to make some bread and I'm going to make some vittles I'm, and I'm going to make some meat and I'm going to bring it back to me and, 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 and see Gideon already know he's in a strange land already because this man this angel is saying some things that is familiar to him because he remembered his mother Nim talking about this God so when a man of God comes to you talking about godly things and they begin to speak life into you where there was no life, then yes, God is talking to you. So by, the Bible says that uh, he went and baked his, you know, he went and got his meat and he went and got his, his vittles some, with some broth in it and he brought it back to the angel and, and, and the angel instructed him to take that that you have made for me and put it upon that rock. Because he know, you know, we are people, uh, un unless God show us a sign, unless we, we, we have, uh, uh, have it right there before, some of us are just like doubting Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, unless I see the nail prints in his hand, unless I see where they, 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 they pierced him inside, that's only then when I will believe. But the angel didn't have no problem. The Bible says that he placed uh, that, 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 that food that he had prepared for the angel upon the rock. And when he put it upon the rock, the angel took his staff and he touched it. And it was co consumed with fire. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, the, the, by him doing that, it, it put a fire beneath the feet of Gideon. Now he's ready to go do a little something. He ain't quite ready. Some of you are ready to do a little something, but you ain't quite ready. 
Look at here. I said that now we've been here oh, six years. We've been here six years. And, 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 and we're about to go into our seventh year. That, that means that, that, that that's going to be a good year. It's, it's, it's our season. We're, it's time to plant the seed in the ground. But here, uh, Gideon is in coverage. Now the angel is getting ready to ask Gideon one more question. Or he's going to ask him a slew of questions. Gideon, your mama and your daddy, your grandmama, your uncle and your cousin, all of them, they're worshiping idol gods. Amen. Gideon, even your, your, your children, they are bowing down to idols. If you got children, want the Jordans more than they want Jesus? Something is wrong with that. You, you, you got kin folks, they... They're looking for Calvin Klein pocketbooks. I mean, you know, and all these things with the name. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But if these things are taking you away from doing what you're supposed to do concerning the house of God. If your house look better than the house of God, something is wrong with that. It, it, when people walk in your house and, and they say, wow, man, this is beautiful. Oh, man, this is great. And when they walk into the house of God, they say, they need to fix that spot back over there. So, so God is telling Gideon to, to go and tear down that idol worship. The children of Israel, because they allowed the enemy to come in, they started worshiping the same God that the enemy was worshiping. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that ain't you, is it? Be careful. How you answer that? So they was worshiping idols. So God told Gideon to go and tear down your father's altar. So I encourage deacons and deaconesses. I encourage missionaries. If you're going to go and do some evangelistic work, don't go by yourself. I had a friend, I had a friend that, that went to uh, uh, visit a sick sister. She called him. He said, she called him and said, uh, Pastor, you need to come. I mean, I don't feel good. And, and I don't call my sister and I don't call my brother. I don't feel good. And, and you need to come in a hurry. I don't know what's going to happen. And when he got there and knocked on the door, she, she came to the door and she had on a nightgown. And he stepped out the way and he said, baby, look at this here. Look at this. Because he brought his wife with him. You hear what I'm saying? He, he said, baby, the, the, the intent for the devil is to kill, steal, and destroy. Because, because they're they trying to find a way to get the Jesus out of you. So he took some of his friends. The Bible said he took ten friends with him. To go and tear down his daddy's altar. Now he got everybody angry. My brothers and my sisters, if you got some uh, Budweiser or some Slits Moss liquor or you got some of that other stuff, some chew tobacco uh, laying around the house, if you got lotto tickets that somebody just uh, went and bought them this morning, they didn't get a chance to scratch them off, I ask you now, if you can beat, it, beat them home and uh, beat them to the car or if you can slide it out of their pocketbook, take them lotto tickets and, and, and just tear them up. <gasps> Pastor, you 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 finna you finna make somebody mad. I'm 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 not going. But 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 look at here. Um, the Bible says that when they went and tore down their father's altar, when they tore it down, <laughs> when they tore it down, everybody was angry with Gideon. So Gideon's father said, if he did what y'all said. You hear what I'm saying? If he done what he said, then let the gods of Baal, or Balaam, hand to Gideon. See, his father even knew when he spoke these things that the God of Balaam had no power. Amen. That, that altar that they was worshiping has no power. My brothers and sisters, those things that you put in front of God has no power. Can I help you? The only power that you need is the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus has all power and the blood of Jesus will never ever lose its power. So, 
And so Gideon was given instructions to go gather some men. His instruction was to get some men because uh, on the other side, there was 132,000 men or more that had invaded their land, had, had took control of their farms and their crop. So Gideon went and gathered himself at least 32,000. Uh, yeah, he got his 32,000. Now Gideon feeling pretty good. I, I can imagine if Antioch Missionary Baptist Church had 32,000 people, 32,000 members, we'll be walking around here feeling pretty good because we'll be one of the largest churches in this area. I mean, people start getting snooty and, 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 and you know how we get when, when God blesses us and we are able to do whatever we want to do uh, when we want to do it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So Gideon, he has his chest out. And then God comes to Gideon. He said, Gideon, I got some news for you. Yeah, God, what's the news? Uh, we got too many men. Yeah, there's too many people in this church. See, see mother, sometimes sometime God will, will, will allow people. See, one thing about the word. I realize about the word. When you're preaching the word, the word will either draw you or drive you. But, but, but we have to be careful how we put our mouth on the people that God drive out the church. Be because you want to point the finger back at the man of God. But, but if Gideon says, <laughs> hallelujah. So Gideon got himself 32,000 men. Well, we can build any kind of church we want. With 32,000, but God says you got too many. So, so he told Gideon, uh, Gideon, ask them a question. Ask them a question. He, he told me to ask y'all a question concerning the building over there. What's your opinion? Are you scared? You're not ready to let go of what God has already promised you? What one thing, I just want to use your pocketbook. I, I. When we give to God, we peek. <laughs> and, and sometimes we look around to see if anybody is looking at what we give to God. That is one of the things that we got to break. Because we got to learn how to be free givers. We sing the song, the more you give to me, the more. We keep looking for the good measures pressed down. Shaking together, running over. We're looking for those, but we are picking in our pocketbooks. We are not a blessing to God. And sometimes we are not even a blessing to the man of God. So Gideon is given the task and told me, told me, asked the question, are you scared? And the Bible says immediately out of the 32,000, two, I mean, 2,000 of them, they left. Now he's left with 1,000 men. You imagine when he had the 32 child, he walked around there. We're going to do something now. And then uh, God said, Hey, Gideon, you still got too many. Huh? <laughs> now, 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 God says, this, The ones that you got, I need you to be very observant of the 1,000 that you have. Uh, because everybody that look like, and everybody that sound like, they are not like like. And, and how you identify these people, sometimes they come, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they will, and sometimes they won't. It all depends on what's on their schedule. So God told Gideon to take your men to the brook. Take them down to the water hole. And he said, when you take them down there, I need you to be very careful. Be very careful how you study these men. 
Can I help y'all some? You know, sometimes uh, pastors can inherit somebody else's mess. Sometimes we put unholy people in holy places and expect the Holy Spirit to still live live in the church. But we got people out of place in the body of church. Uh, I, I'm not talking about any of y'all, but I know that, that there is some things that need to be corrected. So God tells Gideon to take his men, take his men down to the brook and observe them. I'm going to come on down so y'all can see. He, he said, take them down. He, he said, take them down. But the, but the ones that get down on all fours, the, the ones that get down on all fours like a dog. And when he get ready to drink, it, he lap like a dog. He stick his whole head down in the water like a dog. God says, send him home because he is no use because he will not be a watchman that I need. He, he don't care that much about the church. I mean, because, you know, he, he's only care so much about himself. He, he's only worried about how much water that he can drink, how much he can get, how much he need. But then he says, the one that take that one hand and reach down in the water and pours that water up to his mouth and still, still what? He said, you keep them. So now, 700, 700 men left Gideon. Oh, this chef was out there a little bit jammed. He was feeling pretty good. I mean, a thousand, maybe we can work this thing. Let me tell you, the reason why God has to cause a decrease in us so that he can increase. He, he, he don't want you thinking that it was your merits, that it was your might that got you out of what you got into. H have you been to that place in your life where you said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, you was at zero. My brothers and my sister, when you get zero, the next number is one, baby. That means you're coming back up. So now Gideon has 300 men. What are we going to do with 300 men? N now Antioch have, we done, I know, we, we've lost some people and we done gained some people. God came, came and took some and some just left. Amen. Now Lord, how, how are we going to fight the enemy with 300 men? I mean, we were doing pretty good with 32,000. We're doing pretty good with 1,000, but now uh, we only have 300 men. How, how are we going to make it? I mean, how are we going to build a church with the small amount of people that we have? How is that possible? See, God shows us signs. He, 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 he allows the Holy Spirit to, to speak to us. So, so God will go and get somebody. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I don't want you to miss this. God will go and get somebody who, who has been hurt, uh, who has uh, been, been hiding, who, who has been in the enemy's camp, but came out of the enemy's camp. Now he has become a believer. He is one of the 300 that, that God told Gideon to, to go and, 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 and go down into the enemy's camp. Uh, you know, because he had some pains and some suffering, just like you and I. So, so now, you know, he cried out in his spirit, God, if you just do this one thing for me, I'll serve you to the day I die. Now he's serving the Lord. And, and they go down into the enemy's camp. Going on down there. We, they're sneaking down into the enemy's camp, sister. They are down in the enemy's camp. And, and, and they, they are down there and they're listening. They're listening to what the enemy is saying. They're trying to find the weakness of the enemy. They're trying to find out what it is that the enemy has so they overheard a conversation. They heard, they heard that, that a giant loaf of bread, yeah, a, a giant loaf of bread had rolled down the hill. A, a loaf of bread? Yeah, 
you know, like some of y'all be standing in a lot of lines, somebody be telling you that, you know, this is my birthday and all that stuff that you give them the day. Yeah, you believe that stuff. Uh, you believe all that stuff. And you go to the soothsayers and, and you go to the witch doctors and, and you go and go to the prophet and all that stuff. I mean, God ain't going to go uh, all around me and, and tell you what it is that he has for me. I believe God's going to talk directly to me. So they overheard the, the conversation in the tent. The men in the tent. It was dark. And there was no light. They had gotten out of their, their armor. They had gotten out of their uniforms. Everybody didn't look the same. And they overheard a conversation that a giant loaf of bread rolled down the hill and destroyed their enemy. Gideon looked at the man. He said, man, did you hear that? And he said, yeah. That's confirmation. That's confirmation. So the Bible said, come on, let's go. We got to go. We got to go. I mean, God, I mean, God done showed me something. God done showed me something. He done showed me something. God told me to tell every man in Antioch to stand on the wall. Come on. Oh, see, that, that, that was the problem when he went to the brook and God told him, you know, you know to, to study him very much. I mean, I'm not going to ask him more than one time. Uh, God said, tell every man at Antioch to stand on the wall. They, they still ain't moved. Mother, I don't know. He, look at, I know God said, God said, if men don't cry out, if men don't cry out, the rocks will. The Bible says, uh, uh, the Bible said, if man, I mean, I believe God would do this. I know God would do this. I know I believe God would do this. If men don't stand on the wall, God will say to the woman, women, you need to get on the wall because the men, the men, the men, they move too slow. They're afraid to get on the wall. Hallelujah. See, my brothers and my sisters, if we learn how to obey, we will learn how to do the will of God. We got to learn how to stand on the wall. So the Bible says, God gave Gideon his weaponry. He, he didn't give them a machete. He didn't give them a machine gun. He didn't give them a knife, but he gave them a trumpet. He gave them a clay pot. And he gave them a torch. The trumpet is in your mouth. Hallelujah. The trumpet is in, in your mouth. You ought to shout glory. Y'all ain't there yet. Y'all ain't there yet. You ought to shout glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Look, look, listen, 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 you know, when, when you lay your burdens down, that means you're wide open to obey the will of God. Blow your trumpets. Shout glory. All this noise going around in the, in the camp, around the camp. All this noise going around. So the men's down in the camp, they start coming out of their tent and they are in confusion. They don't know what's going on. I mean, they can't recognize nobody. So they begin to stab each other with their own sword. They begin to cut each other's head off. And then Gideon said to the men, stay right there. Don't you move. Because sometimes when, when people are moving around down in the camp, it ain't but 300 of but sometimes when they move around, sister, when they move around, we get scared. But God says, stay right there. Don't you move. And then God says, you know those clay pots that I gave you? I, I didn't give you those clay pots to put a pretty flower in it. I need you to take those clay pots and the rocks that are sitting in front of you. I need you to break your clay pots. Yeah, yeah. What God clay pots? What we going to do with clay pot? Breaking clay pot. See, sometimes we still don't get it. 
When you break the clay pots on this side, the clay pots on that side, clay pots on that side, clay pots on that side, it gives a sound of a mighty Russian, a mighty Russian army. It gives that sound that they are coming down from heaven. Notice you're around the camp. They're down in the valley. They're coming down from heaven. They already remember God from the last time that God had delivered you out of Egypt. They're coming down. So they begin to kill each other. Watch this. Then God told them to take that torch, that fire on the stick that you have and just throw it down in the enemy's camp. Hello, somebody? God's consuming fire. All of your sins, all of your heartaches, all of your troubles, all of your ups, all of your downs, all of your ends, diabetes, heart problems, Then once you put that stuff down, you say, glory! 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 glory. Come on, give God some praise! You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Because when God brings you out of captivity... You need to run and see what the end is going to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the victory. Thank you, God, for what is yet to come. So while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting, I'm going to give you the praise. For what I do not see. Because I believe. In my heart. That this too. Shall come to pass. Do you believe it? Have you received it? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. 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 Yes to your will. Oh God, yes to your way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When I was sick, you made me well. Thank you. When I didn't have no money in the bank, you blessed me. Thank you. When I didn't have no shoes, God, you put shoes on my feet. When I didn't have no clothes, Father, you dressed me in fine linen. That's why I want to give you praise. I want to give you thanks. I thank you, God, for bringing me out out of the enemy's camp. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. But you made death. 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 You made death behave. Excuse me, church. If I, I wouldn't serve a God, Brother Gene, I wouldn't serve a God that I can't give him no praise. You go to the football game, you go to the basketball game, you go to other events, and everybody's giving somebody praise at their place. But when you come to church, you sit there and look at me like a little. Little bird on a log. God is looking to see will you really give him some praise. 
My brothers and sisters, I need you to look back just a little bit over your life. Just a little bit. I'm talking about this morning. When you looked in your closet and you couldn't find anything to wear, but you kept searching. Some people won't come to church if they don't have anything to wear. So stop telling people you got to be have a suit on to come to church. You got to have on a certain type of clothing to come to church. Stop telling them that. Because it is not for you to clean them up. It's for you to get them to church. And the word of God will clean them up. Hallelujah. Listen. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. He been waiting patiently in line. Yes, he has. Jesus was there all, all the time. Look at when you was locked up. You, you know, you don't mind me telling that, do I? When you was locked up, he heard your cry. He heard you say to God, when I get back to church, I'm going back to my post. And the first thing you did, you came back to your, your post. You weren't worried about what people thought of you. You came back and went to work. In other words, he was there all the time. He was there. All the time. You know what he's been doing? He's been waiting patiently. Look here. It took a long time to go through the chemo and the stuff that you go through. There was times in your life you wanted to just throw in the towel, give up on it. And there might be someone here today that is going through something. The doctor has given you some sort of report. Maybe you've been praying for your son. You've been praying for your daughter. You've been praying for your husband. You've been praying for granddaddy. But I want to let you know that Jesus was there. He was there in the beginning. And he'll be there in the end. All we got to do is to let Jesus fight our battles. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. The battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Come on, give God one great big hand clap. There might be someone here today. There might be someone here today. You've been hearing God talk. Look here. You are saved. And you're sanctified. And you are filled with the Holy Ghost. But there's one thing that you lack. Because once we allow Jesus to come into our life, that's a part that we have to do. See, Jesus gave me some fishing nets to catch fish. I can go to the lake and I can catch a few fish. But Jesus made me a fisherman of me. Yeah, I was saved and I had what Jesus had given to me. But I never took the tags off of my nets. I never took the tag off of my fishing pole. I took what Jesus gave me so that I could catch some fish. I put it in the closet. Because I didn't want people to know that I was really saved. But I was still doing the little things on the outside. Y'all ain't talking to me. So if you're still doing the little things on the outside, Jesus got his nets out today. And he's trying to catch some fish. My brothers and my sisters, the reason why we can't catch fish, the ones that who taking their nets out of the closet, you got dirty nets. It's time to clean your nets so you can catch some fish. 
The doors of the church is open. Will you come? One more question. I need you to ask your neighbor a very important question. And this is one of my favorite questions too. Are you saved? You know, this week when I asked the congregation to answer each other, they said, I ain't never heard that before. And then one came after church and he said, I never heard the person that I've been sitting by for the past three years ever ask me a question. So, so maybe, you know, we ask the question, maybe sometimes we need to listen for the answer. Look at somebody else and say, are you saved? Yes, I am. Because there ought to be an answer to the question. Now, look at your neighbor one more time and tell him, just in case, say this with me. Father God, I realize that I'm a sinner. That's who I am. But I'm so glad that Jesus, the Son of the living God, sent his Son from heaven to earth so that I might have the right to the tree of life. So Father, here I am again. Come into my life. Save me. I believe that your son he died on the old ready cross so that I won't be lost. So now I believe in my heart that I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. In Jesus' name, I'm saved. Now look at your neighbor and say, I'm saved. Say it with a say it with an attitude. I'm saved. You may you may be seated. In the presence of the Lord. Let's see if, see if I can get my clothes back on. I believe I had a David moment. Hallelujah. Y- y'all know the real reason David danced? The real reason David danced because he wanted everybody to know that he was happy about what he was doing. My brothers and my sisters, you ought to be happy that you are saved. You ought to be happy that you've been delivered and set free. And look at your neighbor and say, yeah, the Lord is talking to me. If you enjoyed the word, come on, give God a great big hand clap of praise. Is there any other announcements that need to be said before we get out of here? Remember 3 o'clock this afternoon, 3? I'm saying the right time. 3 o'clock this afternoon, if you ain't doing nothing, and most of the time we ain't doing nothing, we're trying to get a nap. But come on back, please.